I am coming to you from my bathroom that is in a super duper need of remodeling and it's kind of in a process and has been stuck here for a little bit of time, but here I am and I have a blue bathtub. So this morning at 7.30, Gabe decided he needed a bath with his bath bombs because Gabe is obsessed with bath bombs. And so we put him in and he had fun with his blue dolphin bath bomb. And when I got him out, I thought, there's a whole tub of blue water. How am I gonna waste a whole tub of blue water um, without showing you something kind of cool? So um, there's my bathtub full of blue water. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about color theory today. You guys were rock stars this week and I am loving watching your color wheels come in. Um, you guys have been really creative going around the house and trying to find the 12 different colors that are in the color wheel and kind of, kind of arranging them accordingly. So I'm super proud of y'all. Um, and I hope this works. I've got some food coloring here and I'm gonna try to talk to you a little bit about um, our complementary colors. So we know that our primary colors are red and blue and yellow, and we know that our secondary colors are orange and green and violet. So our secondary colors are made by mixing equal parts of primary colors together. And we call the law of color um, mixing the same colors with equal parts every single time, you're gonna get the same result. So this is really important in our industry because when our clients come in and they're looking to get their hair color done and they loved it the last time, if we do exactly what we did, barring them having some kind of crazy, you know, them taking some kind of crazy medicine or um, going through something really super crazy hormonal, their color will turn out 100% of the time if you mix it exactly the way it was mixed before. So another really important reason why we keep really good client records. So our primary colors and our secondary colors are what we call complementary colors. So wherever they are across on the color wheel, that is their, their complementary color. And I know you guys know this, but this is just kind of a good visual refresher. So when I have blue, um, it's complementary color across the color wheel is going to be orange, right? So um, blue's complementary color is orange, red's complementary color is green, and yellow's complementary color is violet. Always, I feel like always on um, state board those questions are asked, especially that red to green one. I feel like that's always on your state board. So when we're talking about complementary colors, why is this important? Because when we want to neutralize unwanted tones in the hair, we typically use a toner that is going to mute that unwanted tone. So this comes into play, especially with our blondes. When we're lifting up and we're highlighting, when we're using our lighteners and our high lift colors, and then we're seeing tones that we really don't like. My roots are dark, so I automatically get really, really brassy if it is my virgin hair that's being highlighted. And you can see my roots are coming in. I need to do something about that. Mm -hmm. I'll get on that. Um, so when I am coloring my hair or when somebody else is coloring my hair and it's my virgin hair and it gets brassy, that orange, the toners that are gonna be the best for my hair are gonna be in the blue family, okay? If you're highlighting somebody and it's just like that really chicken yellow, blue's not gonna be your answer. It's violet that's gonna be your answer. So I know that purple shampoos have been super, super popular over the years. And I'll have to admit, as a stylist, sometimes we'd get lazy and we would just tone hair with purple shampoo. And um, it's been so awesome to see in our salon at Apollo how we are using our Shazy Q toners and our Provana toners to really give that color an extra boost and use the correct tone on it and not just slap a purple shampoo on everybody's hair because everybody's hair is not a one size fits all. Um, so, We've used purple shampoos a whole lot in the past, and purple shampoos are great for our typical dirty blondes that go to a light blonde, and they just maybe struggle with that yellow. Purple shampoos are not great for our brassy clients. Will they kind of counteract that? Yes, absolutely they will, because um, it'll just kind of mute it subtly, because in purple is blue, right? Because 
red and blue make purple, but it's not gonna be the best choice, okay? And when we throw a purple shampoo on everybody, even though our clients might have the, that orangey brassy in their hair, it's not gonna neutralize it pretty like something that is a blue base. Um, another reason why I love Pravana, I am not a Pravana spokesperson or anything else, don't get paid from Pravana, but it's what we have at our salon and I love it because their um, color is just so highly pigmented and I love how they mix the blues and they'll have a blue violet and they'll have a blue green and they'll have um, those different colors that maybe if your client has not quite all that brass and they might need more of a blue violet base than just a, a blue base, you're gonna find colors that really help you get that really pretty crisp blonde. Um, so I have a blue bathtub. Now, if I wanna kind of show you that whole yellow to blue that's going on um, with sometimes when we, um, give our clients just a, a purple shampoo over their yellow hair. Um, a lot of times too, I'll see a lot of people wanna have that blue pigment like from a stain and actually have blue hair and they apply it to yellow hair and then it's a mess. Um, typically with almost all blue stains, you need a level 10 white hair. You need unpigmented hair to make that blue look how it's supposed to look. Otherwise it's gonna get really green and not so great. So this is blue. So I am taking my yellow hair here and I am going to put it into my blue bathtub and I'm gonna give it a mix. Now if I'm throwing, you can see it like all of a sudden, Got really green. So blue is not going to neutralize that yellow. It's just gonna make it appear green. Now I might need to add a few more drops for my next part. Let's just add a few more drops and really show you guys what happens. So I am super scientific with my kitchen whisk here. Okay, so now I have green water, right? So my yellow hair didn't get toned with the blue, it needs violet right? It needs violet to kind of counteract that. So now I've got green. So what color complements green? What's my complementary color to green? What's going to neutralize that and make that brown? It's going to be red. So let me show you what red does when you use the proper and appropriate color. It should a neutralized bathtub because I used the appropriate complementary color to what was going on in my tub. And now I really have to scrub my tub. So um, that is just a great example of how complementary colors are really, really important, how the correct one will indeed neutralize it. You cannot neutralize yellow with blue. You cannot neutralize your orangey brassy tones with, with, um, with a violet shampoo, okay? So you wanna make sure you're using the correct um, toner on your hair. If you've got brass, use a blue base. If you've got brassy hair, use a blue shampoo. If you use a blue shampoo on your yellowy hair, it's just gonna make it really muddy and ugly and green. But if you use a violet shampoo on your yellow hair, it's gonna make it neutralize and make it bright and sparkly. So just a quick little um, video and I'm gonna clean my tub. I miss you all so, so very much. 
and I hope that you guys are learning and taking advantage of this time at home just to um, even help out around the house and help out with siblings and um, taking some time for you. Keep those color wheels coming to me. Keep being awesome at getting your homework into me and getting those hours that we really, really need starting off next year. So um, thank you guys. I miss you and I will see you soon. Bye.